some of these questions. It's awesome. You know, um, no, these are, these are these are great. Uh, they no, they do awesome. they do get. Uh, hopefully, we're just kind of giving you uh, some of the terms. Uh, there's actually a lot of really good information. Uh, Wikipedia is always a good place to start. You know, get the idea, and then go to the bottom and find all the sources. Hopefully, there's something there. Uh, but so the difference between an FIR filter and an IIR filter. Uh, an IIR filter is like most EQs that we have dealt with for 70, 80 years. How long, how, how long have we had EQ processing? Uh, and this is where uh, you, as you change the amplitude, the phase relationship between the adjacent frequencies is also changing. That's an IIR filter or an infinite impulse response. Uh, an FIR filter is a finite impulse response, and you can adjust the amplitude independent of the phase relationship uh, to adjoining frequencies. So you can maintain, uh, so you can adjust uh, that relationship. Uh, and you know, again, uh, with IIR filters, that's a very, very minimal amount of latency because you're not taking phase into account. FIR does take uh, more more processing time because it is taking phase and therefore time uh, into account and trying to affect that independently is pretty processor intensive. And it's only what really within the last five or six years, maybe 10 years, that processing power has become uh, inexpensive enough that you can have FIR uh, stuff deployed uh, very widely. Uh, I mean, it was available for a long time, but it was grossly expensive, or you just couldn't get the, uh, you know, processing bandwidth and memory that you could act to actually be able to achieve those things. Uh, so hopefully that answers the FIR versus IIR. Uh, so Wikipedia, again, Wikipedia is a good place to start for that one. And then um, there's another one that I often go to, but it's skipping my head right now. Sorry. Long day. Don't remember what that that uh, other one was, but there's a lot of information out there that is generally uh, pretty good. So, all right. Next question. Um, AC question. Um, uh -huh. Oh, I think it's more of a feature request. Um, will we be able to orient subs on end in the future, other than the SL series? Hmm. Uh, that is definitely a feature request. Uh, the, the short answer is the reason it's not there uh, is because we didn't measure it when we took the measurements for the individual subs. So we have no polar information on that. Uh, and, and the honesty is, uh, they didn't really expect when they took these measurements, and this is a lot of these measurements they've taken a while ago, they really didn't expect people to put the subs on end all that often. Uh, so they said, eh, why would we have to do this? And now they see that it's being done, especially when you're talking about SL, pretty big sub, you want to save some space. So they said, okay, let's show you what that actually does. Uh, and you can see if anyone has done it, the cardioid behavior is compromised when you turn subs on end. Uh, so, however, that is a feature request. Uh, if, and if you email that to support at dbaudio.com, uh, they can put that into the queue uh, and, you know, more requests happen, the higher it moves up the list uh, and then gets put in front of the product managers and they can then allocate uh, time and resources uh, to make those uh, measurements. So hopefully that answers the question. Again, support.us or support at dbaudio.com. I put it in the uh, chat feed. Great. Cool. Uh, uh, more, okay, more questions. Good. Got another one. He, this poor, he thinks we hate him. I told him that we don't. <laughs> no, um, questions uh, are good. Questions are good. Um, when you have to align the main that is array processed with the fill array, doesn't this change phase response conflicts with the phase response of the fill? Full range to full range alignment here. Uh, it can affect 
uh, anyway, there, there will be some, tor some type of phase response uh, differences there. Um, uh, especially if you don't have the luxury of uh, doing AP on your mains and your side fills, 270s, what have you. Uh, so yeah, that's something that's gonna be there. Uh, we try as best we can to ensure uh, compatibility between arrays, but once you start already adding array processing, that gets more difficult. Uh, benefit of having array processing on both your main and your side fill is uh, that A, you get that phase relationships being more consistent, but also that horizontal uh, uh, deployment becomes a lot easier because you have a similar tonality between each array. Uh, it becomes much easier to uh, splay those cabinets uh, uh, horizontally. Uh, so there's definitely a benefit to putting array processing if you can uh, on uh, your fill elements. Uh, and then if you're going with uh, GSL, KSL, uh, you have the added benefit of the pattern control uh, and them adding up together so you get very minimal energy on stage while ideal distribution uh, towards the rear. Wow, I keep sounding like a sales guy. This is awful. <laughs> uh, hopefully it answers the question. Uh, other ones. All right, we got another one that came in. Um, going back to uh, about the waveguide, uh -huh. um, how will the waveguide behave when the array is almost straight in upper boxes in a line array, but in a in a line array, the boxes splay more on the bottom? So uh, the waveguides uh, don't change uh, based on uh, the curve based on the curvature. Uh, they are going to have the same. Uh, wavefront curvature. Uh, I mean, in principle, uh, and there are some manufacturers who have done this, that they have different waveguides uh, for different cabinets based on where they might appear in the array and what kind of curvature you have between those. Like, that's that's a thing. Uh, but that also gets expensive. And it's great for installations because it's, you know, set and forget it. Uh, for mobile applications, that is pretty, that's a pretty expensive inventory that you have to tour with because you're never going to the same venue uh, that has the same configuration. Uh, so uh, the wave guides uh, don't change uh, and the, the wave front coming out of them isn't changing. Uh, and just like everything in sound, uh, it's a bit of a compromise. So uh, the loudspeaker designers are trying to find the, as the curvature they need with the minimal amount of negative effects. Uh, are there going to be some? Uh, yeah, sure. It happens. I mean, it makes sense. It's a compromise. You can't have it perfect for everything. Uh, so they're doing the best they can with the uh, physical world that we uh, exist in right now. So. Another one, another thing popped up. Um, uh -huh. Can you briefly explain pros and cons of horizontal arrays and flown column arrays? Also, do you apply AP to flown subs or is that just a tops only function? Okay. So a couple of questions, I guess, within there. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to address the AP flown sub one first. Uh, if you are flying subs within an array, so top subs over tops, uh, you would, effect though you would put array processing on the entire thing uh, or so you you would put array processing on the entire thing same limitation applies at 100 hertz uh that it'll stop uh pattern control uh however uh most subs don't just stop making noise unless you put a filter on at least the dmd subs uh there's going to be some higher frequencies coming out of those subs and those are taken into account uh, with array processing. Uh, it's not high SPL, but it is something that needs to be accounted for. Uh, you would not put array processing on a subarray, a like a horizontal sub or a vertical sub stack of subs. There's just no, there's no point. Uh, you can't control, it's not, it's not doing anything within there. So just don't, don't even try. I mean, in principle, I guess you could, there's nothing stopping you, but 
it is kind of a waste of uh, just a waste of just don't do it. Uh, the other half of that, uh, pros and cons of horizontal arrays versus flown column arrays. Uh, whew, there's there's probably a lot on each side. Uh, Mark, you may have to jump in and uh, uh, fill in some gaps here. Uh, I think uh, benefit of a horizontal array uh, is that you get even tonality across uh, the entire, as much as the audience plane as possible. I think that's the biggest one. Uh, you also get the benefit of uh, ground coupling. So you get that extra 6 dB just for having to sub on the ground. Uh, those are two uh, big ones. Uh, and then a ho when you talk about a flown sub stack, uh, I've seen them deployed uh, left, right, like behind the uh, main arrays. Uh, and that can be really effective, but you're still running into the same issue of uh, their center, center spacing. Uh, and then you're going to get lobing, just you know, physics. Uh, yeah. You could put stuff in the center. You could put a sub stack in the center or two sub stacks, shorter sub stacks in the center to have more even dispersion. Uh, but I think we all know that that center position gets really, really, uh, that's a lot of demand for that center position. Uh, lighting, audio, video, effects, you name it. Everyone wants that position. Uh, anything else you can add on? Those are just the ones that jump right to my head as the real big ones. Yeah, no, I think you hit them. It's, it's, it's tough, and it's one of those things that using array calc is definitely where you see a lot of that interaction, especially when you hit the interferences um, tab on to see what it's really doing. Um, the flown columns, um, yeah, you get that buildup in the middles or sometimes you get the uneven spacing across the whole listening plane. But the flown ones can help in your far kind of outside area a little bit as well when you fly them and have ground subs at the same time. Yeah. Um, it could be a good fill in for further corners in venues. Yeah, yeah when, you, when, um, when you need to get the far throw applications, you might yeah. be able to do that. And with, uh, if you have balconies and stuff like that. So it all depends on application. Yeah, I know, I know like in a, in, a, in a theater, like from a Broadway point of view, that they will definitely fly subs uh, mainly for space, but also uh, they need, you know, when you get balcony two, balcony three, you yeah. want to lease a little bit of low energy up there, so you fly some additional subs. Uh, probably not a stack; uh, they don't have that much space. Uh, but uh, you get so, the benefit of throwing this, you know, getting the sub energy closer to the audience. Yeah, you uh, hang and, three and subs up in the air per side; it adds a helps. benefit for sure. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely helps. All so, right, another question, but I think this would go to our R and D folk. Um, will DMB ever release waveguides rather than a whole new speaker cabinet for a wider angle? Ah, uh, uh, that can be a feature request. However, it's probably not going to get very far. Uh, DNB uh, generally does not, we, we want to make things as easy as possible uh, in terms of uh, deployment, planning, operation. But that also gets into inventory management. Uh, so, uh, in the same way that we don't uh, we don't sell individual horns, uh, so like for our E12 or E12D point source cabinets, uh, the only real difference is different horns that are in it. Uh, but we don't sell the horns separately uh, because the you know the cabinet says E12D or says E12. Uh, you should be able, we, you know, we're of the feeling that you should be able to just grab that cabinet and be confident that that is what it is. Uh, that, you know, having the ability to swap out a waveguide because uh, you want it to be uh, wider, or in this case, and really when you're talking about this, it's really swapping out a horn because the waveguide is not affecting the horizontal in any way. Uh, swapping out the horn portion or the whole thing uh, to get a wider coverage, uh, you run into the issue of you've got a bunch of cabinets where you have, in order to put them on a truck and make sure you're getting the right thing, you're going to have to take the grill off. 
uh, or you're going to have to do something. And if it's not right, then you got to swap it out. Then you have to have a stock of horns. And maybe you don't have enough. Uh, it just becomes a logistical nightmare. Uh, yeah, and I, I'm, the... sure people, I'm sure people would want to do it, but the, the likelihood of DNB doing that is, uh, based on my experience, pretty low. Uh, not yeah. impossible. You can send that again. Support that you or support at dbaudio.com, and they uh, will uh, put in the queue. Uh, I don't know that, but you know, just being practical, uh, I don't think it's going to get very far. Yeah. Also said the counter argument is that companies put the wrong speakers on the job, as it's in stock rather than having the optimal speaker. Maybe something like Finn's. Uh, so uh, that is definitely something that our R and D uh, team looked at. Uh, they have definitely looked at uh, fins and acoustic lenses and all kinds of other stuff that could be variable, uh, and they've gotten some interesting results out of it. Nothing that they uh, really perceived as a superior result. Uh, they're open to. Any ideas? They, there are so many ideas that they have just abandoned because they just didn't like the result. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, throw these ideas at support again. Support at dbaudio.com. Uh, if you throw them out there, uh, there is uh, now they 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 investigate stuff all the time. They they you know, I know cabinets have been paused been paused because they found this new tech and said, oh maybe this could be it. And then they looked at it like, no, nope, not that. Go back to the original idea. I mean, it happens uh, and has happened. Uh, so, so they always look at new ideas. Yeah. Got another one for R&D, but um, uh, I think we all know this answer is DMB doesn't make a version two. So um, will DMB ever make it easier to change horn for whites MP for rotating the horn? Um, so I think what the whites MP is is what the whites MP is. I doubt they'll make a change in that. Um, but, yeah, probably not. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, probably not make a change. Uh, that is definitely a, a, an R&D uh, request for future cabinets. Uh, yeah, I mean, like when we talk about like the E-series where you can just grab the horn and rotate without any uh, tools necessary, that is certainly a convenience. Uh, a lot of the, I think a lot of the decision making on that end, especially when we talk about Y and V, uh, comes down to where we anticipate these cabinets being deployed and how often they're out on the road. Uh, E-series don't often stay out on the road. Those, those are either installs or like corporate kind of deployments where they go out and they come back. Uh, whereas Y and V-series tend to stay out uh, a long time. Uh, so they need some more uh, solidity to that design so that things don't change uh randomly uh i mean yes there are always solutions but again we're trying to keep it as easy as possible uh while still maintaining consistency uh of result so i think we're are we are we there have we yeah, answered I all think the questions so far i think we answered all we had a couple of comments of saying thank you for this uh they've appreciated everything the q and a's and all that so fantastic great job chris Thanks. Thank you, Mark, for your assistance. I love it. Yeah. Uh, and thank everyone for uh, sticking out. I know we're, uh, wow, a little bit over time. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily my intention, but thanks for uh, sticking, sticking with it. Uh, hopefully you guys got uh, some uh, good answers and some good information. Uh, if you have uh, additional questions, uh, you can actually send those. Uh, for this particular thing, you could send those to support.us. Uh, that's going to come to the U.S. support team where we can uh, answer those. Uh, otherwise, uh, I think we're done. Uh, we do have a couple other uh, sessions coming in, uh, in this week, uh, and then we will be posting more sessions uh, for next week and then going forward. So we're always going to be uh, adding some more stuff, hopefully uh, interesting things if you guys uh, have questions or like, hey, it would be really nice if you would talk about said topic. Uh, again, support.us at DB Audio. That can be something that we can uh, take a look at and see if there's anything available. 
Uh, otherwise, thanks for joining us. Uh, stay and uh, stay healthy. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. <laughs> otherwise, uh, thank you all. Have a good one. Good seeing everybody.